Notting Hill Carnival has celebrated Caribbean culture on the streets of London since the 1960s. It has now become a significant part of British culture, attracting over one million people and is one of the largest street festivals in the world. The two-day event boasts live music from reggae to salsa to soca, still pans, masquerades, soca floats, and not forgetting a whole lot of Caribbean food. And as we usher in the 50th anniversary of Carnival this year, we wanted to go behind the scenes to discover the crafts that helped make it a success. So how did it all start? Well, people always have different stories about how it starts. I didn't go to, as far as I'm concerned, started in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, if you go way, way, way back, it actually has quite a sad history. Because it comes out of the slave trade, Africans dispersed through the Caribbean and the mix of the different peoples throughout that phase and the combination of the African and the Indian and the European together give us a very unique form of carnival that where we celebrate the very large costumes that have actually come from out of the Yoruba tradition. Well carnival is costume. In Trinidad you have a saying it, it, it's mass and pan. Um, in the early days, all the bands in Trinidad who took part in carnival would come out dressed in some kind of costume. Then it just spread to people participating. But in the 60s, the murder of a young man called Kelso in Notting Hill galvanised the community. And out of that negative came a real positive. Mrs. Laslett used to go and play for the school's carnival in Blackwood Grove. One year, she just decided she wants to bring the kids and them on a float on watermelon with Sterling playing the band. And out of that came the Notting Hill Carnival that has continued now since the, the 60s um, with some key people like um, Claudia, Bullijo. And she set it up with, um, with others because what they wanted to do was actually create a space for, for community harmony. And it's quite interesting actually, I was looking at some of the, the background to it and she does actually talk about the way in which art is a way in which communities can come together and you know, find their power through that collective, collective work. So I think that's quite an interesting concept. Our organisation is called Mahogany and we're based in Halsden. We're a carnival organisation and we make costumes with the community using a range of different kinds of materials. So we use foams and fabrics and metals and fiberglass. And we work, we, we would scale up the whole costume first, draw it life size on the floor, and then work from those details. And we have a lot of young people who come to work with us from the local community in the making of that. So every costume is about teaching young people how to design, how to build, to understand how to work in three dimensions, how to paint, how to sew. Our carnival workshop is about learning and developing your creative skills. London is a melting pot of cultures and they're not a new carnival is adapted and changed to be more inclusive of different sights, sounds and expressions but there's one thing I've found that has remained constant and that's the craft and skills that help make this Europe's largest street party. And we've seen how Mahogany have used their winning designs to help support and develop the skills of young people in the local area whilst at the same time you know encouraging them to take up a career in the creative industry. They've learned about their heritage, they've been given the opportunity to get creative, also celebrating their culture and traditions. I mean, Carnival's not Carnival without the parade. So for all the dedicated people who work all year round, these two days make it all worthwhile. Not only for them, of us, but every one of us who get to enjoy it too. Long live Carnival.